Hello everyone and welcome to another video. It's been about 7 months since I last uploaded and I thought maybe it's about time that I uploaded something. That being said, I just recently got back into game dev and working on my game, so that's kind of why I haven't really been uploading. But I've been making some interesting mechanics in my game and I thought that I would make videos on those at least. So today I'm going to be making this breakable wall right here, and without further ado, let's get started. Alright, so we're going to start off here in Blender. Uh, this is a really simple, quick wall mesh that I made for my game. Not really going to go over how to make this, but there is something that I'm going to mention. Uh, these two pillars here have something very special in their name. They both contain ignore at the end of their name. This is something I'm going to utilize later, but if you wish to follow along, you may or may not need this. I'm just doing it because I want these to be static later on. So here we are in Godot. I have my imported mesh from Blender, and I have also added this script that we'll get into in just a second. So first things first, we're going to open up this model really quickly. Uh, we're going to save it as its own scene. We're just going to call it whatever it is right now. Uh, we're going to right click on the root node of the scene and we're going to clear inheritance. What that does, it's going to make all these meshes unique to the scene. So really quickly, we're going to open up this set destroyable script that I brought over from another project. Um, this is an editor script. If you want to learn more about this script specifically, I derived my script from a video by Fine Point CGI. He pretty much does the same thing. He makes a breakable object. So if you want to learn more about how the script works and all that stuff, I suggest you check out his video. Pretty much what this script is going to do is it's going to set these two things that contain ignore in their name, which we mentioned previously in Blender. Um, we're going to make them static bodies down here. Uh, if we create a convex collision, it will make it a static body and also generate a collision for us. And everything else that doesn't contain the ignore at the end of their name, we're essentially going to make it a rigid body with a generated collision shape. For each of these rigid bodies though, we're also going to set the rigid body mode to static and we're going to add it to a group called debris. So really quickly, we're going to select our root node of our scene. We're going to hit file and run. Here we can see that the pillars are now a static body and each of the cube meshes before are now rigid bodies and have been added to the group of debris. Now we're going to add a script to our stone wall here. We're going to call it explosion underscore interactable. I already have the script made, but this is pretty much all the script is going to contain. There's not much really going on in here. The only thing that I'm doing is that I'm calling this function from another object, which is going to be the mine, which we will get into here in a second. But we call it from there and we set all the rigid body mode back to rigid. So here is my mine scene. All this really is is an area node uh, collision shape to detect all the nearby debris and a mesh instance so I know where it is. So here is our mine script. Uh, all that's in here is we have a nearby debris array, which is going to contain all of the objects that are nearby our area. We have an input event here, which is just going to be space, which is going to cause the displaced debris, which causes the rigid bodies to fly out. Our displaced debris here is going to go through a for loop, which is going to loop through the nearby debris array. Uh, we are going to go through here, and if the first rigid body that we reference is mode static, we are going to call this set debris rigid function from the parent, which if we look over here, the parent is going to be our stone wall. If we open up that script, this is the function that we've briefly talked about, which is going to set all the rigid bodies mode back to rigid. If we do not call this function first, that would make our next line invalid as, as you cannot apply an impulse to a static body. So we obviously, because we want it to go out flying, we want it to be a rigid body first before we decide to apply this impulse. So next we have the apply impulse function. We input our rigid body, which over here we have the for loop that we get our rigid body from. Uh, we pass in the rigid body that is located in our nearby debris array, and we pass that through here in our apply impulse function. We also have a horizontal impulse force uh, variable here that we're going to pass through. You can use whatever you want. I specifically use five for this example. Uh, first two things we're going to do is that we're going to set the angular and linear velocity to zero. The reason for this is that once the wall breaks, I want to apply an impulse again to the debris that's just lying around. Sometimes it does cause them to move around really weirdly if I don't do this. So just in case, I'm going to put this as a safety measure. Next, we're going to get the force direction, which is going to be a direction from the mine to that specific debris that we input. After that, we're going Going to apply a central impulse to that debris uh, using the force direction times the horizontal impulse force. And lastly, we're going to connect these mind signals, which is going to be body entered and body exited. Um, really quickly, I'm just going to paste this in. And all this is really going to do is that it's going to check the body. And if it is in the group debris, then we are going to append it to the nearby debris array, or we are going to remove it. So that's pretty much it. I made a quick testing scene. I added our wall, our mine, which is close enough so our collision shape can pick up some of the debris and a camera so we can see what's happening. I'm going to also mention some changes that I made to our stone wall. I selected all the rigid bodies and set their mass to 2. This was ultimately just a personal preference because I thought it felt and looked better when applying the impulses to the debris. 
I'm going to hit run really quickly, and if I hit space, we're going to see the wall fall apart. And a few of these pieces are actually close enough so we can hit space again, and we can interact with those and give those an impulse as well. Really quickly, I'm going to show you what that looks like in my game. Put a mine down in front. We hit space again to detonate it. And as you can see, it opens up the wall. Free for anybody or anything to go through, and me to get killed. So that's pretty much it. Um, nothing much left to say. I'm aware that there's a few other ways of doing it, but I feel like for my needs, this was probably the best way for me to do it, but I also thought I'd share this method. It's been a while since I worked on my game and also have uploaded, so what, seven months? I might be making some more content here soon, I'm not too sure. Maybe, I'll, you know what, maybe I'll wait another seven months, right? But I do have some other mechanics that I might want to make some videos on, so it's possible that I might not wait the seven months this time. But yeah, that's all I got for you guys today. Uh, thanks for watching.